Hello, I am joined today by Vincent McGovern. He is the head of Central and North London branches of Families Need Fathers. So, Vincent, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Ewan, and thank you for having me here. Excellent. Uh, um, if so I can uh, just add to your introduction that Families Need Fathers is a shared parenting charity. Yes, yeah. And I'm speaking here in a private capacity, but it's an honour to be invited to speak. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm yeah, just curious as to uh, you know what your journey is, how you got into uh, um, how, how you you know how you the, came this to become came the, to uh, the head of uh, <laughs> the Central and North London no. branches of Families Need Fathers. Uh, well, uh, in 2007 uh, February, uh, my then wife uh, said to me, first time in 2007, I want a divorce. You're gone. I never heard that word be spoken between us in 10 years of marriage in my life. And little did I know she had been pairing for years. And uh, shortly after, I found myself booted out of the family home. And uh, my occupation for 10 years, nine years, sorry, had been as a primary care of three children, one, two, and then three. And that suddenly came to a stop. It's a wonderful vocation, but a disastrous career. She assured me that with the help of the local services, she would destroy me if I contested anything. Mm. And I assumed that the services were professional uh, gender neutral and partially professional. Well, I have to say that was an extraordinarily stupid belief on my part, but it's one that many people have. Can I just... Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. So uh, later in June, I suddenly found myself receiving over an inch of court documents. I had numerous orders. I had never been in court, uh, didn't know about this taking place or anything like that and uh, booted out of the family home. At the time I was crippled with arthritis in one of my hips, went for a major operation, which was delayed. So I was living in a garage at the former, my own house, which I had owned before the marriage. Fortunately, I owned that garage. So I had no mobile phone. I had never been on a computer or anything else. So I was, shall we say, slightly disadvantaged. A very good friend, I had many friends who helped me enormously then, but a particularly good friend put me in contact with several, what he saw as fathers and men's groups. Mm -hmm. And I found when I rang them up that most of them were one man in a sitting room or a bed sit given out about the system. But I could do that myself, I wanted help. So I was put in contact with Families Need Fathers and initially I wouldn't attend their meeting because I found out they met above a, a pub in uh, EC1, London EC1 off Leather Lane. And I didn't want to meet a bunch of sad men crying into the beer because number one, I was virtually a non-drinker. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't interested in whining. So I went along anyway, a couple of weeks later, after ringing them, and being impressed by the person that ended the phone, I went to the meeting and it was a complete road to Damascus conversion for me. There was a short, stocky man conducting the meeting. I thought he was the next builder's foreman or something. He had a very capable, authoritative manner. The committee members that were beside him were extraordinarily knowledgeable. There was a room of about 25 people there. And this to me was an extraordinary development and next. The help I received was incalculable. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. swore that I would give back what I had received. Because for me, it is a difference between life or death, effectively. Mm -hmm. I do not know, many people might say, perhaps I haven't given back that much, but many people thank me. So I've heard the expression being used that I try to provide a, a room of calm in the middle of a hurricane in their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. And that's a very nice expression. I borrowed that from the gentleman who I heard say it. Right, yeah, yeah. And um, so that, that was just your experience That's my of seeing introduction the, to Families Need Fathers. the organisation and you yes. thought they were a very effective organisation. So far ahead of anybody else I was ringing, because at that stage yeah. Fathers for Justice had, uh, shall we say, decommissioned for a year or so. Right, yeah. Uh, put yeah, it politely. Yeah. And uh, there seemed to be nobody to help. I had a solicitor, but I had no money. And yeah, uh, yeah. I had a very good solicitor, actually. But it was with money from family and friends. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when I got to the family court, the judge there was in Holborn. The judge there was very, very angry at the treatment of me. And I began to have some confidence in the system. I began to realize that maybe there is a system here that can be progressed. Yeah, yeah. I was unrepresented at the time. So I borrowed money and got a barrister for the next hearing. And that hearing, all the evidence that had been, uh, had been processed in secret by London Borough of Rent, the Messy Violence Agency, which is a partner and embedded in the borough. I had been processed in their MARIC process, multi-agency risk assessment conference, and there was 11 pages of evidence against me, which I'd never seen until in that court, mm -hmm. the second hearing. 
And there's two pages of evidence about me having repeatedly kicked a dog, the family dog, in front of the children and their mother, and then yeah. killing it. Okay. One small problem is that we never had a dog of any sort. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, my family at home in Ireland have a, a dark sense of humour, so they're probably nicknamed this Phantom Dog Shadow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to think sometimes when humour was a store to me, and in this business for a year, you will have no humour in the beginning, let me tell you mm -hmm. that much. Mm -hmm. um, when humour was a store to me, I like to think that Shadow can bite. Right, yeah. And my hope is that Shadow's biting will remove a lot of the, uh, what I call child endangering gender discrimination that's throughout the entire family court support process and too much of the family court itself. Mm -hmm. But the support process is an affront to anything got to do with children's safety. It is uniquely disastrous, operates in secret, yeah, has yeah. no regularity, no regulation. It's just a collection of gender vigilantes who have basically behave like extortionists. And, and you found this out from your own experience of well, uh, the system? Well, not so. alone from my own experiences. I have also, on my journey through the system, I've had uh, five ombudsman investigations. Yes, yeah. Three of which were parliamentary ombudsman. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. And uh, that process of digging, I used to be a labourer in my former life, yeah, so I'm used yeah. to digging. That process of digging, uh, it was extraordinary what it, it, it dug up, shall we say. Mm-hmm. And I realized that there is a vast system masquerading behind the welfare of the child. I, yeah, I, I, under, I understand this. I mean, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get to this in a minute. Just, mm -hmm. just going back to, you know, your, your own experience of yes. going through the system. Yeah. Um, so what, you, you arrived in court and um, you, would, Probably the you, most would, you would found out that um, apparently you, you had killed the family dog. Oh, no, dog, I didn't know but, that uh, in the first court. Th there was... Um, you had uh, th there was no there was no family no dog, dog, so it, the whole thing was a load of cobblers. Well, and, and then where, where it, did it, it go? From it was there? very effective. That was the second court. The okay, first yeah, court had yeah. turned up at a, a wooden post would have had more intelligence than me. Right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I'm sorry to uh, insult the wooden post because uh -huh. it probably has more intelligence than me at that stage. Right. It right, is a yeah, brutal yeah. experience. I can only think that being brought out in front of a firing squad would be yeah. the only comparison because the mind is completely blank. Yeah, your stomach yeah, yeah. is can't even heave. Mm -hmm. You lost a bit of stone or weight in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. all you have is copper in your mouth mm -hmm. when you swallow or anything, and uh, it's a brutal experience. It was the second hearing. The first hearing, the orders were made to yeah, get the evidence yeah. out. It was the second hearing that I found out about the the phantom dog. Another equally, if not more, absurd allegations. Right, but yeah, they were yeah. not so difficult to uh, disprove. Sure, yeah. Sure. I mean, I was also accused of going around border towns in Ireland. Imagine the 1980s, going around border towns in Ireland with a gun right. over your shoulder, off to shoot dogs. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. With all the amount of security there was in those border towns. Yes. And yeah, you're going to walk yeah. into a town carrying a firearm over your shoulder? I see. The yeah, life expectancy yeah. would be rather short. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Seen yeah. on sight, <laughs> shot. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is an example of this. But it makes a difference, I realise, later, because guilt is not determined by action in this mm, process. Guilt mm -hmm. is determined by gender. Yeah, yeah. And the Brent Domestic Violence Advocacy Project, which is the partner and controlling agency in Brent, yeah, as it yeah. is for many other boroughs with a different name, uh, a constitution and practice that will only help, I quote, because got this under freedom of information, female survivors of domestic abuse. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, I had I'm, cu I'm curious to know how you did, though, with, the, um, with all of the allegations that were held against you and um, how you then prevailed in, in the system? Well, there was about seven hearings, or six hearings, before I got to what's called a three-day finding a fact hearing. Yeah, yeah. And the allegations from that brought out at the second hearing, the mother tried to distance herself from some of them. Mm -hmm. And But they were obviously part of the process that had removed me from the family home for the care of the children. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, while those orders that she had obtained, ex parte, that means without notice to me, I didn't even know. If I had even waved to the children, if I'd seen them, I could have been arrested for breaking a, a non-molestation injunction. Yeah, yeah. That's an example of the draconian totality yeah. of the system. Uh -huh. It's meant to protect the vulnerable. Of course, the protection of the vulnerable has become a sledgehammer to quite often attack the vulnerable, yeah. Yeah. depending yeah. on gender. So after five hearings, six hearings, I'd run out of borrowed money for, you know, it's very generously given, but mm. costs mm. are horrendous in the court process. And I had two family fathers, I had found a Mackenzie friend. And the Kafka's guardian, 
that's the Children of Family Court Advice and Support Service, was so antagonistic towards me, defending myself against the false allegations, because I had witness statements. In fact, yeah. I had 54 witness statements. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Among my witness statements were a freeman of the City of London, mm -hmm. superintendent of police, inspector of police, a couple of doctors. Yeah, because a lot of people knew me. Yeah. As yeah. on the residence committee. And they knew very well that these allegations were beyond absurd. And there were even one local councillor who didn't like me, a Conservative councillor then, uh, he and I spent a year campaigning regarding the controlled park in his own. He wrote the most glowing testimony about my care of the children. But he spent half a paragraph giving out about me in the beginning. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when it came to the three day fine effect, I had a very good Mackenzie friend, but we're totally unprepared because we're up against Boris's solicitors a whole lot. And um, it looked as if I was only going to be slaughtered. Yeah. But well, my yeah. attitude was, I will go down fighting. Sure, sure. I will fight until I can no longer fight. You find that energy from within you. Yeah. Because yeah. you realize if you don't find that energy, you're going to be destroyed. And in my opinion, there's no worse feeling. And I've often seen it in men's eyes at the meetings. I see over 900 men a year pre-COVID uh, at the meetings, weekly meetings. There's no greater feeling of loss in a man than a man who feels he didn't fight for his children. That's a pain he has for life to carry. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you fought and lost, at least you can live with that. Mm -hmm. The system was far too great against you. Yeah. Yeah. And by lost, I mean having a proper relationship with your children, moving on post divorce or separation. But I had totally underestimated the forces ranged against me. And uh, Kafka's guardian, that's Children of Family Court Advice and Support Service, hated me so much, she tried to get me injuncted from the charity Families Need Fathers. Mm -hmm. And I had a hearing on that. Now, the judge threw it out. But this is an example of the total hostility towards litigants and person, as I was then, yeah. receiving yeah. assistance from any source. Uh -huh. You're not meant to receive assistance. You're only meant to be processed. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't read that script. Mm -hmm. I had this illusion of belief that there's a court process. Evidence will be brought out. It will be contested in court. And there will be a, a, a finding. Yeah, and a yeah. judgment. Well, that is what the court wants, but it's not what the system that surrounds the court process wants. So in the three-day fine effect, a blank page would have found more information on it than my brain had when that hearing started. But there's an excellent elderly circuit judge, a lady, and she had seen many uh, frightened <laughs> skeletons in front of her, ghosts perhaps, and uh, I realized after a half an hour, this is a meaningful process. This is not just a cut and paste. This judge wants to get to the bottom of things. She wants to find out. Mm -hmm. So after about two hours, my brain, which had been absent for since I got booted from the family home, it, it began to reform. I wasn't just dependent on my Mackenzie, who I met through Family Seed Fathers, which is absolutely invaluable and pivotal. I wasn't just depend on him to think of everything. I could now think for myself. I could think of what he had said and I could develop it. So there's a three day hearing and I was cleared of 90% of the allegations that were left in the charge sheet, shall we say, against me. Yes. The phantom yeah, yeah. dog had been removed at an earlier, uh, had been removed and that, all that. I'm, I'm guessing there were some other pretty bad ones on there that oh, they uh, threw out. Yeah. yeah, oh yes. The, the prince, but I then realised later on, because I've been in Mackenzie myself in all 350 hearings, mm -hmm. that quite often what's done is the most absurd allegations are made in the beginning yeah, to yeah. get the father removed from the family home. Mm -hmm. And if he has the extraordinary bottle to fight the system himself effectively, yeah. A lot of the allegations are then uh, withdrawn. Mm -hmm. They've served their purpose. Okay? And the services, social services, and all the rest, they say, well, we've done our job because we've removed the threat to the children. Completely ignoring the fact that the protector of the children has been removed. Yeah. But gender yeah. determines outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, as Sir James Mumby, former president of the Family Division, says, the system totally underestimated how the system was going to be gained. Yeah. By yeah. the facilitation and promotion of false allegations. Yeah, yeah. You could say he's naive in believing that. I've met the man and I have a lot of respect for him actually. He's retired now. But a lot, lot of judges exist in a cocoon. Mm -hmm. But that's, perhaps that's all the better for them. But the entirety of the system outside, uh, heavily funded and promoted mm -hmm. massively mm -hmm. at all stages by local and national government, is totally prejudicial. Yeah. Extraordinary 
it's difficult to describe the level of discrimination within it. Yes. But after my first meeting with Kafka, which was an absolute brutal experience. Yeah. And yeah. I speak as a man who's a former road racer, motorbike uh, road racer in Ireland, and I've had severe accidents. The meeting them was worse than any of that. What what did they what did they do in that uh, meeting? Well, it was total blanket disregard for any concerns I had. Yeah, yeah. And all there was was the mindset of you accept responsibility for your violence. And I said, but what violence? And the answer I got was, but the professionals in Brent have deemed you to be violent. Mm -hmm. There are no more professionals in the Ku Klux Klan yeah, or agents yeah. on behalf of black civil rights. Uh -huh. This is absurd mm -hmm. that these gender vigilantes could be deemed professional. Yes, yeah, yeah. But this is what I was told by a court officer. By two court officers, sorry. They were mm -hmm. in tandem. Mm -hmm. And they weren't good cop, bad cop. There's bad cop and worse cop. Yeah. So I didn't even get yeah, the good yeah. cop and the bad cop. And I realized that I was only to be processed. Sure, sure. And they couldn't understand why I hadn't gathered this script and just gone along with it. They were genuinely in disbelief yeah. that I yeah, wanted yeah. to protest my innocence. Uh -huh. And the phantom dog, for example, which I brought up, that was dismissed as being a typing error. Two pages of an allegation uh -huh. was a typing error. Someone's doing a very yeah, bad I mean, typing that's, 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 that's fairly ridiculous. It's isn't beyond it? ridiculous. <laughs> This is a perversion of justice. Yeah, yeah, That's all yeah. that is. Let's call mm -hmm. it what it is. It is a straightforward perversion of justice. Yeah, yeah. And they're excuses. Is you see that a lot of men come to meetings will protest their rights under uh, equality of in the system, right to family life, right to a proper court hearing, because yeah, that's Article yeah. 6 of the European Convention of Human Rights and Article 8. They are qualified rights. They're not absolute. The only absolute right in the family court is well for the child is paramount. Mm -hmm. So there's no other rights that exist. Yeah, yeah. So this has been totally hijacked and misused. It's backdoor social engineering. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah. done in secret. I mean, I, I don't really like that as a an underlying statement because I, I think the rights of uh, the parents are also paramount as well. But and they have so, none. They have none. Yeah, but I mean, g generally, if, if, it, if it was a more altruistic oh, organisation, then it would... A also acknowledge the human rights yes, of the parents as well. But, uh, absolutely. I, I think it, it doesn't seem to, to do that. Well, yeah. not alone does it not do that. Two comments here. Lord Justice Thorpe, yeah, who was yeah. a very eminent judge for many years, a disastrous one, I might add, but a very eminent judge in the family court. There was a case many years ago where a barrister for a father brought up the question about the father's rights. And Lord Justice Thorpe leaned forward and said, What are you on about? He has none. And you mm. know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for those who are confused about father's rights, let me quote section 2, subsection 4 of the Children Act. Yeah. And I quote verbatim. For dividing the doubt, the father's no longer the legal guardian of his children. Neither is the mother, I might add. Mm. That's my add on. The state is. Yeah. But the yeah, state has yeah. determined that the mother shall have the children and the father will be removed. And domestic violence is the weapon of choice. And when that wasn't sufficient, the vigilantes in the system kept altering the term domestic violence. Yeah, yeah. So then now basically your gender determines your violence. Because mm. you, can, you cannot be innocent because you're male. Yeah. It's yeah, the bottom yeah. line. And if you don't believe that, I would say you look at the training for domestic violence and coercive and controlling behavior. Delivered by Dr. Yeah. Bianca Jackson, yeah, Barstow. Yeah. Just, just to move back to your, so um, how, how uh, just the, the resolution of your, your story then, it was, um, uh, it was it was fairly decent in the end. The, uh, the well, resolution. The, well, the resolution was satisfactory, but then the finding of fact, the three-day finding of fact, was excellent. Yeah, yeah the judge yeah. really did get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Now I yeah. didn't come out as being a, a virtuous first communion recipient. Mm -hmm. I have my faults, but ninety percent of the allegations I made against me. In fact, I think I got nine and a half out of eleven thrown out. Yeah. They were against me. Yeah, yeah. Huh. And it's only relatively small outstanding. And the allegations I made against the mother were broadly substantiated. I think it was six out of eight right, were substantiated. Yeah. And then the guardian offered me an extra two hours a week contact with my children from a contact centre. Okay, yeah, yeah. After all that, I initially, what what did you have for the whole of the, the process? Until oh, I was point? weeks. I was for almost two months, and I couldn't see the children in a supervised contact centre. Right, yeah, yeah. Which was the children were traumatised. And so it was just for like an hour or two when it was once every... It has increased from an hour and a half, I think, to two hours. Um, the judge that managed the directions hearings did his best in the circumstances. At the time, yeah. I certainly didn't like him. Can't yeah, name yeah. him, obviously. But at the time, he did his best to manage the case and to keep me and the children in contact with me. Mm -hmm. But the two eldest children, 
who before that all they were interested in doing is winding each other up. They're then age nine and seven. They ended up spending three years in therapy. Yeah. Because of the yeah. damage done to them. Now I will never forgive the system that caused my children such harm. Sure, sure. Uh, there is no mercy for me for a system that allows that, facilitates, not just allows it, facilitates and promotes it. And they, they were just traumatised by not they were totally seeing you traumatized ones, by, by the whole having circumstances. to see you within the contact centre. The sensor. mother was later diagnosed bipolar, yeah, for example. Yeah. So like that answers a lot. She had been, before we got married, she kept a secret diary in preparation for getting rid of me. Yeah, I had a shelf yeah. life. Mm -hmm. Now this is common in an awful lot of these type of cases. Most of the toxic cases, it was called parental alienation, the mothers have prepared for years. And sometimes the father too, no doubt. But that's yeah. only a small percentage. The percentage is 95 to 5%. So I ended up with a very good final fact. And then I ended up having to go through more hearings to get what's called uh, shared residence. Because then used to be a contact order. Contact and residence. As far as I'm concerned, contact is an insult beyond belief to a father. Or a mm. mother for that matter. Mm. Contact is what you have with aliens. Yes, yes. It's what soldiers <laughs> have with the enemy. You have contact. Uh -huh. It's not what you have with your children. Uh -huh. They're not an enemy. They're not an alien. And I'm not one to them. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't, I couldn't psychologically suffer this disgusting comment that my children and I can have contact with each other. Oh, I see. What yeah. barbarity. Of, of course we can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the yeah, terminology yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. So I had three more hearings before I got uh, shared residence, which the mother bitterly opposed and hired a QC. I was on my own with my farm family's my father's Mackenzie friend. Yeah, yeah. And we got shared residence. Now, I take my hat off absolutely to him and the charity for assisting me here. I make no bones about it that they were pivotal. All right, there, was, there were more people, different people in charge then and all the rest. And then a few years later, the eldest child stopped seeing me and I went to court to try and enforce the order. He was then aged 11. And I got an order saying that the order is upheld but will not be enforced. Right, yeah, yeah. And the Bohin, the guardian, whom I in the meantime had a parliamentary almost of an investigation into, who recommended that the child not be seeing me, despite the court order. Mm -hmm. And absolutely no desire to understand why the child didn't want to see me. Had I hit him, beat him, shouted at him, had I done anything wrong? Yeah. No desire. Yeah. yeah. So you, you realize the, uh, the social engineering. Yeah. Now yeah, it happens yeah. to mothers too. The primary factor what happens to mothers is in the, what's called public family law, where mm -hmm. the children are just forced to be adopted. But uh, it was also, I had, Six years of shared residence with my two younger children, Sorry, court, courtesy of the, the courts. Yeah. So I thanked them for that. All right. I do thank them for that six years. The, elder, the youngest was three when this business started. I've yeah. seen him he was nine. Then he stopped seeing me as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kafka once again was so corrupt. And I use the word corrupt as in refusal to undertake their duties. Not as in accepting bribes. They're ideologically corrupt. Yeah. Because... Yeah. Their domestic violence programs that they love to refer fathers to, respect as the organization, only has that the father can be the perpetrator. They don't have one for mothers, unless they're victims. Mm -hmm. This is like Queen Victoria saying, how could women be lesbians, when the homosexuality was made illegal in Victorian times. You realize what monstrous abuse of language and common sense there is here. But of course, it's all hidden in the veil of silence. So I then spent a uh, number of years not seeing any child, really. Yeah, yeah. And um, then the eldest came back to me a few years ago. He's now in university and doing very well. And him and I have a very good relationship. And he's lived with me at times and been on yeah, holidays together. Yeah. But the two youngest I haven't seen for a few years. Uh, I can live with the fact that I have done everything possible to make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about them every day. But I realize that... Uh, Many men have been destroyed by thinking yeah. about the children yeah. they're not seeing every day. And I'm not interested. I hate this system too much to let it destroy me. Mm -hmm. I will not accept it destroying me. No, it's fair destroyed enough. Yeah, it's destroyed yeah. many people. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you picked the wrong clown here. As sure, far as I'm concerned. sure yeah, yeah. Now, I was uh, just, just, just to get a, um, a timeline on, on mm. this then. So, um, uh, initially, after, after the last first. Hearing, um, so after the first, uh, you know, uh, battle through the family court system. That's 2007, that you, started. You then, you then saw them for six years after uh, that? Two so. years of shared parenting with the two younger children. Okay, Not yeah. with the oldest one. The oldest one stopped seeing me within two years of the order. Right, yeah. But I had yeah. six years with the two younger children. Sure, sure. And yeah, I, I, yeah. Do have, I am grateful for that. 
Yeah. Let yeah, me yeah. emphasize. I am grateful for that. But but then after that, that's when yeah, she started yeah, using so. more uh, parental alienation yeah. strategies, and it, it all started again. And then you didn't get to see the. Well, um, it's the complex two because the that, girl who's the older, the middle, the middle child is a girl. Um, she was living with me then, and then she split from me altogether on Father's Day. So I can't say parental alienation was a factor there. Okay, that would yeah. be untrue there. Yeah, yeah. But there were there were issues so profound from the damage done to the children in the family court process that the children are damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, when they got to teenage years, I was warned by the therapist that the, the daughter particularly there'd be major problems. And I thought, another spoofologist, but they were right actually. The major problems. So I can't blame the mother for parental alienation there. That would yeah. be unfair in that yeah, context. Yeah. Right? Uh, but the youngest son, for no reason whatsoever, he just gradually developed over a few weeks an extraordinary hatred of me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, I realized, and this happens often at around nine or ten, when the child begins to think they're thinking for themselves. Of mm -hmm. course, the thoughts have been <laughs> put in there over time. Yeah, yeah. So that I would put down to parental alienation, yes. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. But uh, he's now, uh, he's almost 17. I haven't seen him since uh, he was nine. Right, yeah. Kafka's, the new Kafka's officer, described him as being approaching teenage years when he was age nine. Uh -huh. Think about it. Age nine, he's approaching teenage years yeah, and able to yeah. make his own decision. Now, she was so incompetent once again, mm -hmm. despite knowing the Parliamentary Ombudsman investigation against her predecessor, Yeah. I got yeah. another Parliamentary Ombudsman investigation into her. I mean, they are a joke organization, mm -hmm. but so mm -hmm. few men are prepared to fight them. Yeah. Effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the central disaster. There is no opposition. Lots of people claim about the money they've spent in court. So to go back to my court and, hearing, and just, just to, eight um, years, eight just, years just of court. One, just one more thing about the uh, the case, so if, well, if I may, uh, yeah, before we, we uh, you know get get into to other stuff. Um, so I mean, what now? Now you have a, a good relationship with your the eldest, eldest son. Only. And I've known of the other two. But not, not with the other no, two. No, the other two. Okay, I get the yeah. presents every Christmas and birthdays. Yeah. All is well. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there's no relationship. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, so I, I live with that. F fair enough. Um, ho hopefully, um, they communicate with the, the eldest one and, um, you know, develop a relationship a, with you at, at some there point. There was so or... much damage done to my children around the year or so of the divorce that it has... It's robbed them of their childhood. Yeah, yeah. It's robbed them of their teenage years. It's about them of trust, as far as I can say. It's about them of hope. Their eyes went from being joyous and happy and getting on in life to dull. Yeah. I yeah, can yeah. look at children of divorced parents, and I can tell you the photographs before and after, but the children's nice. eyes. Nice, yeah. yeah. They've been, trust has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that is a central failing in the family court system, which is by far the worst of developed nations. I had eight years of hearings. The first hearing was in June 2007, 20th, um, sorry, 6th of July 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last hearing was in 30th of September 2015, mm -hmm. eight years. I have had 43 hearings, and about 37 of them, or 38, I was litigant in person, mostly with a McKenzie friend. Yeah, yeah. Because anyone who goes into court who is not very experienced in this business on their own is just going to lamps the slaughter far yeah. too often. Yeah, yeah. Because the opposition, the counsel, the barrister, the solicitor for the mother, the Kafka officer will meet you outside and you're like a bull going into a, a bullfight. They will stick the spears in you. Mm -hmm. So you are all prepared, you have your whole uh, story and all the rest, and they will completely derail you before you get into court. Yeah. You get into court and what you want to talk about doesn't happen. Yeah. It's railroaded, you give very, very limited opportunities, far too often because the courts are far too busy. And it's a disastrous process with the worst outcomes for children of the developed nations. Yeah. And it's a deep shame on the practitioners involved, but on society at large. It is a deep shame. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, that includes yeah. me. I'm part of society at large. And then just um, in, in terms of uh, what, what you did after that, you, you then moved to... Uh, you started helping out with the organization. Oh, well, from 2007, uh, when I started that, attending yeah. the meetings, after a few months, I was asked to join the committee. And they then had a very strong committee in Central London branch. Yeah, yeah. And then they started chairing meetings. And certainly I was the person with knowledge. Okay, yeah. yeah. And when I attended my first hearing, probably the bus ticket I had had more intelligence than I had. Or the right, tube ticket, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I attended yeah. the first hearing. But over a number of months, in the meantime, I had very good assistance and I had managed to get a, 
a, a local government ombudsman inspection into Brent. Yeah, yeah. So I'd begun to learn how this system worked. Mm -hmm. I learned, mm -hmm. started to learn how to dig. And um, I, I was receiving help myself and helping others. And I mean, 80 to 90 percent of fathers who attend the meetings, you cannot help them. Yeah. Because the yeah. system is just too biased. Sure. They sure, haven't got yeah. the wherewithal. at all. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, those who do manage to get a result are either very capable or very lucky. And yeah. quite often both. Yeah. Right. So, quite yeah. often both. I emphasize. Mm -hmm. It's a total lottery. So all you can do is reduce the chances as much as possible of them being hanged. Yeah. Try yeah, to yeah. give them a working opportunity. But many fathers cannot accept or understand the fact that no one have no rights. The, no rights to be seeing their children, to be involved with their children. That is a mountain that they cannot psychologically get around. Mm -hmm. It stops an awful lot of them from getting around it. it. It kills them there and then. Because they've been processed by the system I told you about, with the local agencies and all the rest. They've been booted from their family home ex parte. Tens of thousands per year this happens to. A huge increase since 2016 with provisions in legal aid, yeah, where you can yeah. only get legal aid if you claim domestic violence. Uh -huh. That gateway is only available for females 95% of the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you realize as a volunteer that you're only going to be able to help 15 to 20% really. And that's a small percentage. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather help 15 to 20% and help none. Yeah. And uh, some do get a good result, and some do have a proper lifelong relationship with their children, whether their children are children. And uh, yes, you have saved a few. Okay, so uh, you think the system became worse after 2016 when um, they brought in this legislation that um, allowed the, uh, the mother primarily to make allegations of domestic violence and then she gets legal aid from that. It had been for years heavily biased, but while mm. there was legal aid, I never received legal aid, I might add, and the mother had a lot of money, so she certainly didn't, wasn't going to get it. But there used to be, 20, prior to last vote, legal aid, sentence and punishment of offenders. Now we're talking about the family court process, and the overriding umbrella is last vote, legal aid, sentencing and punishment of offenders. What crime have you committed? Mm -hmm. Being a parent is not a crime. But here you are straight away, you're demonized. One side is to be punished because they're an offender. And the other one has to get legal aid. I mean, the right is on the tin, shall we say. Yeah. yeah. And the process with the domestic violence agencies and all the rest is that as only females will get assistance, women's aid, refuge. Mm. There's a whole well-funded, vast system here yeah. with total yeah. control of the narrative uh -huh. and the media portrayal and all the rest. And uh, they had it all stitched up, yeah, and they yeah. brought about this process that legal aid was removed in the Cameron Clegg government, I think it was the coalition, because of austerity, and it would only be available for, for legal aid, sorry, for domestic violence. Yeah. Because we yeah. could all see what a minefield that was, mm -hmm. and it came to pass. And it went almost immediately from a 60-40 playing field regard legal aid, 40% male, 60% female, to 95% female, 5% male. Right. In yeah, a space yeah. of a few months. That's legal aid statistics itself. Yeah. July to September, I think, 2016. And that immediately led to a huge increase in suicides of fathers. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But many people in the system are quite happy to have men committing suicide. Because they argue there's an act of violence, which proves that men are violent. Mm -hmm. So your death is useful to them. Um, this is how brutal this is. Explain that again. Sorry. Right. After LASPO came in, and there was a huge increase in normalization ex parties. Normalization means you can't be near the wife. That means you're usually booted from the family home. Yeah, yeah. You can't harass, pester, or annoy. Uh huh. All right? So if you send her a happy Christmas, you're looking at three months inside because you've broken yeah. your injunction. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you ask how are the children, tell them I love them, you've mm -hmm. broken the injunction. It's almost impossible to not break the injunction. Right. And, and you say so you can be arrested and then thrown in jail. Oh, for, absolutely. For doing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's breaking an injunction. You might, yeah. Now, depending on the police officer you meet, I don't forget they have this positive power of arrest. Now, I've never yet been arrested myself to my astonishment. Right, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I've never actually been charged with anything or mm -hmm. cautioned for that matter. Well, that's another story in itself to caution. Never yeah. been, let alone convicted of anything. But the vast majority of fathers who might have to come to us have never been cautioned, charged, or convicted. They're yeah. innocent people, or yeah. the innocent people in society. But the vast majority of them are too poor to afford representation. And so then the, um, 
uh, the wife or the, the mother of the child then uses this. Uh, no, what, this what was the um, what was the system? Sorry, less law. Legally, La- it's sentencing and punishment of offenders. Okay, so that she, came in she, in 2016. So basically, she makes the allegation, yeah. and then for the um, the dad, he um, he's a, he's is suddenly a, seen as like uh, he's a perpetrator, the, the, the worst criminal who's ever walked the face of the he, earth. He's a direct descendant of Genghis Khan. And and so if he then tries to send the kids a um, a Christmas present or a birthday card, broke the injunction. And so then he can it's immediately be arrested and well, thrown in jail. Normally, they get three there. months of spending sentence at the beginning. Okay, yeah. But yeah. I've known fellas do three months, and they usually do community service in that. For sending. Now, it is meant to so, protect... So, so they'll do the suspended sentence and then add community no, service No, no, no. That, they, they'll often... Most of them get a suspended sentence who break yeah. the injunction. Yeah, yeah. Make it off with a warning, uh-huh. which they're lucky. Yeah, yeah. But that depends on the copper you meet. Yeah, yeah. And that really does depend on the copper you meet. Uh, some of them get uh, brought to court and get a suspended prison sentence. Right, and no yeah. few of them have done community service mm-hmm. for that. Now, of course, this is meant with the best of it's, intentions. It's so, it's so draconian, isn't but it? But it is meant with the best of intentions to protect vulnerable mothers from brutal fathers. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, that does exist. I'm not for a second saying there's no brutal men. Of course there's brutal men. Mm, and mm. there's mothers brutally beaten and abused. But the system has become a perverse that the most brutal of mothers are brutalising innocent men. Yeah, yeah. Far too often. And the system is that they have to go along with it. This is the system. It then owns them. I know situations where mothers have tried to withdraw the allegations. Yeah, yeah. And they were told that because you made these allegations, and you're now telling us you did, that they weren't made, or they're not legitimate, mm. when the very system that assisted her, assisted in making them up for these statements for the normalisation ex party in the court and all the rest, she's then told that we'll have to get social services involved in looking at your children. So, of course, she's not going to protest anymore. She's just going to go with the system. She's no choice. So what, what's the rationale there? So she's she's made the allegations. She's been and encouraged now she's and assisted in making them. the allegations via their private meetings. I, initially, they they, initially they do that. And then oh, she yeah, makes absolutely. the, yes, the yes, allegations. Yes, yes. And then afterwards she if says she, no. If she, if she wants to withdraw them in court, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. she fears the court process. Yeah. And there's a decent judge who starts to ask some questions. And if she wants to withdraw the allegations. Yeah. I have known, in my personal experience, four mothers where I was McKenzie friend for the father try to remove, try to withdraw the allegations, and the Kafka officer involved in the case has told her that we'll have to report you to local social services. Questions about your ability to parent your child or children. So, so what's the rationale for that? They, they now think you that she's lying? You do not screw the system. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. I have a process. Yeah. And she has decided that she wants to opt out of this process. Right. You're right. not allowed to opt out. Yeah. yeah. That's not an option. Uh-huh. They own you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. She has made these allegations. They have been uh, assisted in making them. Yeah, yeah. Right? For example, the one about me killing the family dog. Yeah, yeah. Th- there was a leading question on that, which mm-hmm. was, has the father ever been known to abuse animals? Right, yeah, yeah. So, of course, the mother's thinking, well, hang on, I haven't got enough, because she was told she hadn't enough evidence to get an ex parte application against me. Sure, So, she, sure. of course, she had to add it up. Yeah. So, yeah. certainly, there's a dog invented yeah, that every yeah. kicked and killed. Uh, right? So, this is the process with the, a lot of these mothers. Mm, they, mm. Quite often, I mean, this is a war on working class people, I emphasize. Yeah, yeah. Let me absolutely, the war on poverty is a war on poor people. There's no intention of removing poverty. It's quite happy to keep it there, I might add. Um, middle class upwards, there's far less of these agencies involved because they got the funding, they got the system around them. They, they, they can fight the system far better. But in the working class people, the working class communities and that, it's open season on them. Mm. And they are just to be processed. And I've known situations, where, and I've known mothers who had the children taken into care. Yeah. Because they made allegations, they couldn't back it up, and then the system, the, the, they're taken into care. So and then we, they, we, they we tried to withdraw the, the yeah. allegation, yes, and, yes. and so and, then and, they and have the investigation by social services right. against them. And the children are taken into care. And the children are taken And into then care. some of those mothers are coming to me for help. Yeah, yeah. Because they're so desperate. But you see, once public law becomes involved, yeah, I'm not involved yeah. in that. I have no expertise in that. They only have my... Now, there's no doubt, of course, that some forced adoptions are necessary. There are mothers who are crackheads, heroin addicts. And, and so it's Kafka who, who threatened to send the case to social services, is uh, it? So? Not officially. Okay. They'd be, they'd be talking to the mother outside the court. Mm. No, it'll not be in writing. No, no. <laughs> this is a criminal organisation far too often in, yeah. in uh, application. Yeah, yeah. Because any organisation that's meant to protect children Mm-hmm. 
that has a perpetrator program that's only for half of parents. That is not protection of children. Yeah. That yeah. is toxic gender politics. Backdoor social engineering is all that is. And I that, mean, to it, me, that's it, totally it, illegal. It, it, it sounds start. completely wild. It uh, what, sounds what bonkers. What they're doing. I can't yeah, say yeah. this to most people because they think I'm insane. Yeah, yeah. And this is their official policy. Uh-huh. Of course, it's not advertised. Now, I've had two parliamentary ombudsman's investigations into Kafka's. Yeah. I'm the man responsible for them having forced to set up a complaint and, system. And it, it was for instances like this? No, where... no, no. I mean, no, this is my own case. Okay, this sure, own case. sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've had two parliamentary ombudsman's investigations into Kafka's. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I know too much of their mindset and all the rest. Sure, sure. But I also found out that... And, and from, from those ombudsman cases, uh, what, what was the, uh, the, only the result? Outcome, the only positive that? outcome was um, they were forced to set up a proper complaint system. Mm-hmm. And they had to change the complaint system that brought in the parliamentary ombudsman investigations quicker. Yeah, yeah. So then they hired a specialist consultant to head that off. Right. Brent right, Council, right. for example, hired a consultant, the next uh, ombudsman investigator, to deal with me when I made progress to my local government ombudsman. Of course, they've maintained that it was coincidence that they brought in this ombudsman investigator to be head of the complaints department when I was making my complaints and making some headway. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's a coincidence. I have actually no doubt it's a coincidence. Right. They never needed one before. Yeah. Suddenly they needed one. Coincidence. Right, right yeah, yeah. Because it's state money. It's, yeah. It's not yeah. their money, it's state money. So there are good Kafka officers, but they're rare. They're a minority. And they usually don't stay around for too long. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I've met good Kafka officers. There is no doubt they're good Kafka officers. No, good, no doubt there's good social workers. Sure. But sure. they are a minority because the system is heavily rigged. Yeah, yeah. But that's not just their fault. And this is where I'm at odds with an awful lot of men. It's not their fault that the system is rigged. It's the fault of the rest of society, us included, yeah, who know something yeah. about it, to do more about making it a proper system. And a proper system should be one like what they have at the continent, the Scandinavian countries, yeah, where you have far yeah. better outcomes for children, with far less expense to the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, that does seem to go hand in hand. It does hand in I hand, the, but it's vigorously uh, resisted. Um, it's, it's one of these... Uh, you know, not narratives I see again and again, which is that the more the state spends on a particular oh, industry, that the, the worse state is it a brutal gets father. for, uh, the state, you know, and any of the people who were, yeah. Yeah, go through that industry. The yeah, state yeah. is a disastrous father yeah, it's, and yeah. is a hopeless parent. By and There's a few exceptions, but overall it's a disaster. I say that because all you do is look at the prison population. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you realise that a lot of people earn a good living out of this. Mm-hmm. As Aaron Pitsy has said, we were talking to a prison governor one time, Every child brought into, brought into a broken family is an extra point on my pension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. simple as that. Uh-huh. Uh, the, the, the weaknesses of the families and the humans and the children is just money for that system. Look yeah. at North America, this massive incarceration rate, which is an absolute insult sure. to sure. civilized society. Mm-hmm. The state of California, since the Bahia Universal and the Children Act in 1970-something in California, Dr. Warren Farrell, I heard him say this at a presentation, Mail Psychology Conference, has since then had, this, I mean, this is absolutely shocking. It's a 13th federal maximum security prisons built. Yeah. yeah. And one university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that time. I mean, it is absolutely appalling mm-hmm. that people can be just processed. So that is where I have a, an extraordinary hatred of a system where you're just a cog in that system. Yeah. Once you're in it. If you're not in it, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. But the, my anger is not so much with the system, it's with the men, far too often the men, I might add, mm. who know about the system, complain about it, and do nothing about it. Who, who go through... Go through it. ...the system, get and then by it, w- do nothing once, about it. once they're done, yeah. once they're okay, then they leave. Or, they, or they're not okay, and they leave anyway. Yeah. They're smashed, the yeah, majority yeah. of them. Yeah, that is my anger. Uh-huh. For allowing a system that says that because of allegations, untested in any court of law, Assisted and promoted by government funded agencies. Yeah, yeah. This is the equivalent of um, black men opposing the Ku Klux Klan for help with the civil rights. Uh-huh. As a man, you're automatically denied access to these services anyway. Mm-hmm. Most, most police stations have a large post of domestic violence with a woman getting hit and all the rest. The positive powers of arrest. I know lots of situations where men have been attacked by the mothers and have phoned the police, and the police have come out and arrested the man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've heard of uh, which is har- which is such, ridiculous. Such stories Pantomime. Well, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. come. I know of a solicitor who was a fellow committee member in uh, Central London branch. That happened to him at his house. The mother visited him at his house, drunk. Mm-hmm. Left her own house, came to his house, drunk, started a row with him, 
He's tried to phone the police. Schnee bit his thumb off, damaged his nerves to this day, scratched the side of his face like a rail, four, two railway tracks, four lines. She called the police then on the phone. He was trying to call them on because he was bleeding like hell. Yeah. He gets arrested. This is a very capable committee member and a solicitor. I can't mention his I name. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, the police, uh, the, yeah, the way they're dealing that's their with mindset. domestic and violence And they call it positive well. powers of arrest. I mean, just, just to focus on um, this, this Kafka situation again. So initially, the, um, the, the mum speaks to them. Nearly all of um, She's persuaded to go down the domestic violence No, no, this, violence is, no, no route. this is domestic. Kafka's are only if you get involved in the court process. Yeah, yeah. Kafka's are not involved until you're involved in the court process. Right, right. Your court advisory, Children's and Family Court Advisory Support Service. Yes, yeah. And I know the High Court judge responsible for the letter is support. But, but in, initially she's it's a persuaded domestic violence agency to... at the local services, local councils. Okay, sure, Oh, sure. it's there that the, is the gateway. They're the gateway. Right, right. But Kafka's work hand in glove with these yeah. vigilantes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my case, they describe and, and them so as it's what, So it's the local council who... Oh, absolutely. They're, yeah. they're the ones who persuade her to go down well, the... Well, the agencies, initial, the domestic violence um, agencies. Uh, and, the, the initial allegation and of domestic violence. And the solicitors violence. harvesting this yeah, with yeah. The domestic violence. There's lots of solicitors who just hover around these domestic violence agencies sure, sure. to hoover up the vulnerable. Right, and right. And they yeah, assist... Yeah. And, and so from, from there, she gets, um, you know, full contact with the child and usually... Oh, you no, know, the father's thrown out. He's, he's thrown he's out. He's thrown yeah. out, so she has total contact. Yeah. So then she has yeah. to protect, all sisters protect. She's sure. the vulnerable parent. Sure, yeah. yeah. And all the government funded sisters have to protect her. Yeah. In my own yeah. case, there was a red alert against me with a helicopter on standby if I was senior to the and, family and, home. I mean, you'd, you'd say in, in most of these cases, um, it's uh, families who are fairly poor. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. The majority, middle class downwards. Yeah. Because there's only yeah. one home. Uh-huh. Whether it's local authority or private or whatever. Sure, sure. And whoever gets the children gets the home. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. simple. Uh-huh. Uh, and there's no, see, there's no concept of shared parenting really in this country. Well, I mean, what would you say in, in a lot of houses, um, it's the mum who's on kind of welfare payments anyway, and so she's living in... No, within, a lot, a lot like of them a, are... There is that, certainly, yeah. absolutely. There is that, all right. But they are not... I would say two-thirds of the people who come to us for help, the mothers are not in that category. Mm. These are people trying to work. Yeah, yeah. In what's called the gig economy, maybe. Sure, right? sure. Working in those hours or whatever. Uh, but uh, so it's not just the the high rise towers. Yeah. What some people call chavs, a horrible yeah. terror. No, uh, that is a section of it, of course. But they are uh, with those people actually. The fathers normally don't try to be involved because they know they're not going to have a chance. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they leave quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the fathers who've been involved in rearing the children, who've been living in a stable relationship. Sure. Who've been sure. married to the mother, perhaps. And, and so, uh, the you're ones talking about burn the a most. situation where, like, they're possibly both paying towards the, the mortgage oh, and the oh, shared yeah, mortgage. Yeah, quite often. And then the guy gets thrown out. And so, he's paying the all of his investments within that house uh, oh, is uh, taken to, away from well, him. He may and get, he's, he's not left with he, a whole he, load he, after he that. He may get what's called a measure order. Yeah. yeah. Which means that when the children are 18 or when they finish education, yeah, and that can be yeah. very late sometimes. I know children be in education until the 30s with a suit of the mother. Right. Yeah, That's yeah. exception, of course. That when the children are 18 or finished for their education, he, the, the price will then be sold and he will get the assets. Now, I don't concern myself with the financial aspects of this. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I was, I was just children. curious. But in, no, but that in, is what the, happens. Uh, sort of the, um, the, the regular setup. Oh, the regular setup is the say, father yeah, is out, yeah. the mother yeah. has the house, mm -hmm. and uh, he will have to give maintenance. Yeah, yeah. And assist. And, and just this point that uh, quite often these are guys who aren't making a whole load of money in, in their jobs. The vast, and that, the, that the vast majority of them would be on the, uh, what's the average industrial wage? 25, 26,000 in London? Yeah. yeah Th that yeah. would be the majority. Sure. sure and a lot yeah, of them would yeah. be on less. Mm, mm -hmm. I mean, there would be a few on more. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, okay. Let's look at a lot of what teachers earn. Yeah. For yeah. example, 30 odd thousand uh -huh. for the average teacher, things like that. So it's up to that. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Teachers are usually easy to make Kenzie for. Uh, and to assist because they have got a functioning brain to realize there's an actual system and the official system mm -hmm. and they're not worried about uh, yeah they, they normally are quite capable so it's from the 30,000 brackets downwards I would say yeah. the most affected by us yeah that we yeah. come across and so they, they don't have a lot of money for hiring no solicitors and that sort of thing and, yeah, or to uh, borrow from family or whatever right yeah the worst uh, thing you could ever say when you go to family court solicitor is I will pay whatever it takes 
Yeah. Because the next few questions they will have is what are your assets? It'll be very judiciously done and all the rest. Sure, sure. And once they realize there's a house and assets and all the rest, oh yeah, they're keen. Mm -hmm. And you see, Legal Aid doesn't pay very much. I yeah. think it's only 49 or 52 pounds an hour, the solicitor, uh -huh. which is low rate of pay. But you see, it's the ideology of the people in the process. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, I have seen the most blatant examples of perversion of justice imaginable. I can't say them, obviously, because I'd be revealing the court I was involved in, the hearing. Yeah. So yeah. it'd be easy to, and of course, the system will protect itself. Mm -hmm. I would get jailed straight away for breaching confidentiality. Right. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't wish to go to jail that easily. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd make it harder for them. Uh, I know a McKenzie friend, incidentally, is serving seven and a half years. Yeah. And she's yeah. sentenced to the age of 73 for breaching uh -huh. confidentiality. Now, she seriously did breach it. Right, and she's totally yeah. wrong. Yeah, but that's yeah. an example of how the system will protect itself. And when you're jailed for contempt of court, you don't get one second off for remission. Yeah, no half yeah. sentence or anything like that. Mm -hmm. you know? And you, nobody, you can't go to the press around here about it, because they're all injuncted. If they mention it, they're joining so, you. So, so since 2016, you'd say there's a, a vast number of men who were in this bracket who... You know, we're, we're in, uh, say, say, you know, married or just partnering yeah, with a yeah, woman and yes. has a child with her. Yeah, our And children. then, you know, she uses this yeah. um, domestic violence. This is the ticket. Uh, this is the ticket. Against yeah. them. They're thrown out of the house. Yeah. And then they just have no contact with the children. Well, you and see, they, they end up, you know, seeing you with uh, one of your masons. Well, they will get virtually guaranteed of no contact for three to six months. Yeah. From the yeah. thrown out. Because from the application that's made to court, until it's heard. And that depends on the first court you come to. Is mm -hmm. it proactive and is it willing to restore contact? Mm -hmm. Right? That's usually in a contact centre. Now, I'm a graduate of a contact centre. I have a lot of time for them. But sometimes it costs people a fortune. Mine didn't because rent were forced to pay it by the council. Yeah. So, yeah. By, by the court, sorry, by the court. So thank you to the court who ordered that. I would like to name the judge, but I cannot, obviously. Right, but, right. However, my appreciation of that. So I'm a graduate with a glowing report from a contact centre. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But to go and see your children in a contact centre who you haven't seen for a couple of months, you don't know how they're going to turn up. Yeah. You have yeah. no idea. You know, it, it, it is like going to a firing squad. Sure, sure. Because you don't know who the children you've looked after for nine years, every day, changed nappies, looked after them, fed them the whole lot because as a primary carer. Yeah, yeah. They, they were your second skin. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have a mobile phone during all those years because I didn't want the children to compete with a phone to talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, when you collect the children from school, that's their time when they're young primary school children or in key stage one. They yeah. want to tell you about their friends or whatever. That's yeah, their yeah. total time with you. Mm -hmm. After that, then they might go off do something else or whatever at home. That's it, tomorrow. So the average father can't be prepared for three to six months of not seeing the children whatsoever till the first court appearance takes place. Yeah. Now, officially, it's meant to be a return hearing within a couple of weeks. Well, yeah, officially. But that often doesn't happen for a wide variety of reasons, right? The wrong address is given to the court. That's a common one. Mm -hmm. So sent to a former address the father is at, or something like that. Now, this is so common as to be. And sometimes there's no return date on the ex parte hearing. He's making an application to the family court, which takes about three months before he gets a hearing. Mm -hmm. So that's four or five, six months down the line. Yeah, yeah. By then, the children have got a burning hole in their heart because they miss you terribly. And they have no... They have no, uh, no assistance. They're not being assisted in remembering you positively, shall we say. Yeah, yeah. And then when they meet you, you're causing so much pain. They blame you for the pain quite often. Now, that didn't happen in my case. But I met three skeletons of children. The older two particularly were skeletal. Yeah, yeah. They didn't represent at all the children I knew. Sure, sure. The youngest one was only three. And he, didn't, he couldn't have come near me for 20 minutes. He just sitting with his head down. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. thought, I've lost them. Mm -hmm. I mean, a brutal knife wound in the gut, but I have two children, yeah, so try yeah. and get this relationship restored with them. Uh, closely monitored by a social worker, who was very professional, credit for sure. And after 20 minutes, the youngest one came along. I emphasize he was uh, three and a, a half. He came along with uh, a changing nappy, a cha sorry, a changing mat that I had in the contact center, and he threw it in front of me. Because his last memories were me changing his nappy, and we used to have a game of tickle. Yeah, because he is, well, you're changing the nappy, you must have mm. make it a bit of fun. It has mm -hmm. to be done. And he wants to go back to that in his mind. No, I see. I hadn't time to cry over it, you know. But he wants, to, that is his memory of me and him. At uh, tickle time, that's yeah. how he used to call change the nappy. Yeah. Well, that's better than arguing with a child. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but the many fathers, I have seen fathers totally broken outside a contact centre. Mm -hmm. Weeping softly around the corner because the children didn't turn up because they had a cold. Or the car had a puncture. Or she's late for the train. Or there's no limit to this. I've, I mean, I've, I've also heard of situations where CAFCAS officers have been at... Uh, it's been supervised contact oh, yeah. I've by I've had them, that myself. And then they, they make up fairly heinous lies about well, what, the one, uh, what the happened. The extreme example there would be Jonathan Copeland. Okay. Where a yeah. Kafka's officer called Susie Smith. He had been uh, primary care and sole care of the child for several years, the daughter, because the mother had left the country. Yeah, yeah. The mother was basically off her head, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And the mother came back to the country and decided to get the child. So she made an application to court, which is her right. Yeah. Now, I don't know whether the father was letting her see the child or not. I don't know the background to it, so I'm not going to comment on what I don't know. But as part of the, their duty, Kafka's had observed contact between the father and the child. Right. Which yeah. is fine. Yeah. She decided she didn't like the father. Mm -hmm. So she made an allegation that he inappropriately touched the child. Quote for he'd fingered his daughter between the legs while she was on the swing. Nice, yeah. He yeah. got arrested for it. Yeah. She yeah. reported him to the police. He was a capable guy. He didn't roll over. He didn't do the usual arguments and shouting. And uh, she was sacked by Kafka and he got the £86,000 payout. It went to the Healthcare Professional Council, which yeah. is the body the responsible for the registration of social workers. And it determined that it would not remove her registration because she was not angry when she had made the allegation against him. If she had been angry, they would have removed her. She wasn't angry. She wasn't angry. So yeah, because she wasn't angry, she wouldn't. Didn't so she was, she was sacked from that particular organisation. No, she was sacked as a Kafka's officer, but she's still a registered social worker. Right. And still yeah. working as a social worker. So, so this is the system protecting it itself again, as you yeah, pointed well, out How before. could you? This is Machiavellian. Uh -huh. In fact, Cesare Borgia, who wrote Machiavelli, would have been proud to come up with that. Mm. Yeah, you know, mm. it would have been another feather in his arrow. Right, yeah. This yeah. is on, you can Google Susie Smith, Jonathan Copeland, and you can see the report of the Healthcare Professional Council. You read it yourself. I'm not saying anything that can be checked out. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. is horrendous. And he, he was the, the child's sole carer. Oh, for, the for years. The, the, mum the had mother been had been left away the and uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just came back and then challenged for custody. Yeah. But, uh, well, I don't know what she challenged for, so I can't comment on what okay, I don't sure, know. But sure. she made an application to the family court. But presumably yeah. some presumably. custody or yeah, so, yeah. some contact. Yeah. 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 And uh, now he had been given the child by court order years earlier, is yeah. my understanding, yeah, my recollection. Yeah. He hadn't just booted the mother out and kept the child. He got the child by court order years earlier, yeah, is my understanding. Yeah. And don't forget, an awful lot of fathers rear children. It's just not generally acknowledged. It's, it's, it seems odd then that he would even be invited, you know, he'd even have to go to a contact centre. No, he wasn't a contact centre. He was a, the Kafka officer wanted to observe him during contact with his child. So he brought the child to a local play area. Okay, sure. sure. No, he wasn't in a contact centre. Right, well, yeah, no, yeah. Let's be correct there now. No, oh, fair, fair No, I, yeah. I didn't explain it clearly enough to you. I'm not, you are 100%. You, are, you haven't been through this process. So, it's difficult so, so you. but I mean, he was the child's he sole the, carer oh, absolutely. anyway. Yeah, and by so, court order so, for years. I mean, what, what, just presumably as a, uh, just as part of their part you know, of evaluation, the yeah, yeah, they, they uh, yeah, yeah. observe contact between him. A section called a section 7 report. And then use that as a way of then making this Well, that's the most example it's I know. You, you initiated this particular section sure, sure, about yeah. the Kafkas making the allegations. Yeah, yeah. yeah now, yeah. that's the worst one I know. Mm -hmm. Now, I emphasise, I have seen Kafkas being very professional. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I emphasise. I will always defend some of them. Sure, sure. But the body politic is rotten to the core. I, I, I think it's one of those where, uh, you know, obviously this doesn't happen every time that uh, a Kafka well, officer are, sees a, uh, the average you know, seven reviews, report, um, the, a, you know, a carer, uh, whether it's male or female. They, they do but, what's uh, called a Section 7 report, if it's yeah, asked to do it yeah. by the court. This comes under Section 7 of the Children Act, where they're meant to establish and bring the information to the court. So the eyes and ears of the court. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, they're absolute masters of negative linguistics. Yeah, yeah. They really have a skill at it. I mean, I take my cap off to the skill. Uh -huh. For example, it'll start off, the first page will be the Kafka's, the date of the report, names of the parties, the registration of the Kafka's officer. Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's normal procedure. Fine, All right? And they're meant to interview both parents. And they're meant to interview both parents with the children. It often happens that they don't interview the father with the children. I wasn't interviewed with my children. Mm -hmm. Even though I had been a primary carer for nine years. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the Kafkas told me the mother disputes that. So therefore, suddenly, it was no longer the primary carer. Even despite her high flying, 80 hour, 80 hour a week job away from the family home. But I quickly became no longer the primary carer. Mm -hmm. But even that pantomime aside, they will often interview the children in the mother's house. 
or their father's house, he's booted out of it. Yeah. And he, they'll interview him in their office. Yeah. Or they'll interview the children in their office so the mother haven't brought them in. Yeah, yeah. So you can be very confident there's debriefing going on before and after. Sure, sure. Because we're in an antagonistic system. Should be inquisitorial. Yeah. It's antagonistic. So getting back to the negative linguistics, the first or second page will be about the mother has made allegations against the father. Mm -hmm. So these allegations are written down. That's fine. That's the job. And then further on, it'll be that the mother has shared some history. Yeah. So we've gone from making allegations to sharing history. Yeah. Right? yeah. And then on about the fourth page, it'll be the mother has disclosed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, a disclosure is a material finding a fact. Uh -huh. Right? It's an absolute operative term. Mm -hmm. So they'll interview the father and he's denied these allegations or whatever. So they just say the father denies the allegations. So they've had four pages demonizing him on a sliding scale. And on their toolkit, oh, I love these toolkits are there. He therefore qualifies for the domestic violence perpetrator program, domestic abuse perpetration program, yeah. or the domestic violence intervention project. Because this is the manner of criminal organizations. They change the abbre abbreviations. Subtly, every few years. Mm -hmm. And when someone objects to them, they'll say, Ah, oh, but hang on, we don't have that system anymore. We have this system. They change yeah. one letter in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All with the same organization respect, mm -hmm. which, as is mantra and constitution, is that only males can be guilty, can be perpetrators of domestic violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the sliding scale. So by the time the father gets to court, he's got a very negative Section 7 report. Now, I emphasize the vast majority of fathers I come across, 90 odd percent. I've made a cautions, charges, or convictions. Mm -hmm. The only thing they are guilty of is having the wrong genitalia. Yeah, yeah. That's the only thing they are guilty of. Okay, the mother doesn't like them at this stage in life. Maybe she's right to not like him. That's irrelevant. I, I, I'm totally unconcerned about their personal likes for each other. Yeah. Point yeah, is, they yeah. produce children between them. Yeah, yeah. And those children deserve the protection of both parents moving on in life. I, I think the, the other point is, is if the, the relationship has broken down, then... It usually has. Um, it's a... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's likely there's going to be some contention between oh, yes, the couple exactly. anyway. And you need you, a you system know, that uh, flares it. Yeah, yeah, it, it seems to exacerbate oh, everything. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it, instead of um, what it should be it doing, down. which is... Uh, like, inquisitorial, yeah, like the continent. the flames, right. you know. And, well, I often yeah. say that social workers, domestic violence agencies are Kafka's, mm -hmm. are like bringing a petrol tanker to a house fire when you've called a fire brigade. Yeah, That's yeah. my personal expression. Uh -huh. And far too often, that is the truth. They will severely exacerbate the situation, yeah, totally yeah. inflame it, and they will always say that it's in the best interest of the children. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear that utterly hollow, totally yeah. unproven mantra, yeah, yeah. I always think of what the um, female MEP said to me when I got to European Parliament in 2014 to the Petitions Commission, looking into the systemic failings UK family court process, and because I had four ombudsman's investigations at that stage, I considered knowledgeable, so they brought me over. And then it got shafted over there by five minutes, yeah. became one minute, and yeah, what right. have you. But afterwards, in the corridor outside, talking to a few female MEPs about this process, one that came up with the best expression I've ever heard in my life, mm -hmm. which is, it is obvious that in the UK family court system, the welfare of the child means the welfare of the professional at the expense of the child. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard it described better. Uh -huh. Because the welfare of the child is the paramount principle. It's totally unproven. It's mm. a mission statement of convenience. Yeah. That's all it has become. Yeah, yeah. There are people in the system who do believe it and try to walk towards it. Uh -huh. right? But it's a bit of the equivalent of throwing 20 people overboard yeah, and yeah. throwing a few paddles out to five of them and yeah. saying, we want to help you survive. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. an insult to mm -hmm. any form of practicality or anything else. And for some strange reason or other, whenever it deems a mother unsuitable, right, in the very few percentage of terms that it does, it seems to go overboard to demonstrate how bad she is. The, yeah, all yeah, systems right. in all. And Women's Aid and all these other organizations will not help that mother then because they're only interested in getting rid of the father. Right. When she's right, been doomed, yeah. deemed a bad mother by the system. Good. So I've had mothers who aren't seeing their children often come to us for help. We're sure yeah. parents are. They will help them the same as anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're absolutely, to me, it's an absolute right of a child to have a proper relationship with both parents and the wider family. Yeah. That's yeah, the law. Yeah. But incidentally, it's about to be taken away because there's a family law working group as we speak with women's aid represented in three sections of it and respect and a dud judge who was former director of gingerbread or not bother naming the individual and they are looking at removal the presumption of um, contact okay yeah, yeah. so it'll be gone within a year or so 
It might exist in as an aspiration, but in reality, it'll be gone. Because right, there's no opposition. Right. Okay, so, I mean, it, it seems that there's a, um, you know, uh, this really negative system, and it seems that there... I, I'd say what one of the problems, actually, I'm seeing is um, that they... They say there's this kind of child-centered approach. Yes. And I, I think, I'm, I'm seeing this in a, a number of different areas as well, but I'd say this is a big problem with the state because it, um, what it's doing is it's only focusing on, you know, the so-called humanity of the child, but then is ignoring the, the needs of the parents. And so they're, they're just taken out of the picture. And oh, I, one, I, one parent, one parent. Um, yeah, one parent. To a yeah. great extent. To far to great but, but, ju but just by using this idea that, that everything is done in, in the needs and the interests of the child. Yes. When you say that, as soon as you say it, you say, it actually, the parents everything. don't matter. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and, oh, yeah. um, it's the overriding principle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I have no problem with that principle if it was the uh, actual, if, right. if it was the outcome. Yeah. yeah. For example, in Finland, uh -huh. there's uh, a government there of five coalition parties, mm -hmm. all led by women. And only 2% of the family cases end up in the family court. Yeah. The default yeah. position is 50-50. The state has far less funding for domestic violence agencies and far more help for contact centers and help for both parents than the inquisitorial system. Yeah. Because, yeah. as the prime minister of the country said, who is female, this is about the children and society, mm -hmm. which is actually addresses what you have said, where in the UK it's about removal of rights. Yeah. Now, they pretend to acknowledge the rights and all the rest, and they'll give it wonderful... Like the Catholic Church used to do, talking about wonderful philosophies and all the rest. But the reality is that in the UK, in 2020, less than 50% of children at the age of 15 have regular contact with their father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 85% as regular contact with their parents, with both parents. When I say regular contact, I don't just mean a father Christmas visit. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking proper, regular, meaningful contact. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, some people would say that they're feckless fathers. Can, can you just say that statistic again? Sorry. In the UK, in 2020, yeah. it's estimated that 50% of children aged 15 do not have regular contact with their father. Half of children, Half of children don't have regular contact with their, their father. father. That, I yeah. think, is a labour force survey. Uh, 2015, it, it came up initially and yeah. on a projection of it rising. So I'm not certain whether it's 50% And most have or regular contact with their mother in contrast oh, to Oh, yes, that. yes, yes. And uh, in uh, Scandinavian countries, in, uh, in, EU, in, in EU countries, the average, I think, is 85%. Yeah, yeah. Of Scandinavian countries. And in Finland, it's over 90%. Mm -hmm. That's very really meaningful conduct. Because they are the societies put far less emphasis on the antagonistic system, adversarial system. Yeah, yeah. And they put far more on family therapy and help and assistance. Infinitely better system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's estimated now that one in eight of every school children have mental health issues these days yeah. in the UK. It's a figure I keep hearing. Now, I'm not a child psychotherapist. And there's some of them, I'm afraid, who are making a good living out of child, children's misery. They're not doing much to solve it, from what I can say. But I know there's some good ones in there. But um, as an example of how disastrous the system is for children, the vast majority of children are automatically sense nowadays. And when the father's put from the family home, that's it. Yeah. From yeah. talking to children at school and schoolyard and all the rest. They right. know. Children have this extraordinary honesty. Yeah. yeah. And grasp of practicality. And they know it. And they just become sullen and start acting out. And particularly in the teenage years. Girls become pregnant or whatever. Yeah. Boys become stupid. Get into the drug gangs. They're there to be recruited. Yeah. There's no father to protect them. Mm -hmm. On the subject of father protecting children. During the Rotherham scandals and all the rest, for yeah. the child grooming, yeah, yeah. fathers were arrested for trying to protect their daughters. I've, I've heard this. Yeah, yeah. You can check it online and mm. see the outcomes. I mean, what lunacy! Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because uh, fathers are not meant to protect their daughters in this system. Yeah, yeah. They're only meant to pay. Now I'm not paying for mine. I kind of complain because I was a primary carer. I don't have to pay maintenance. Moving on. Mm -hmm. So I love all these uh, female MPs talk about the gender pay gap. Well, they're saying to him, assistant, that men keep paying women. I mean, talk about perverse. Yeah. Because yeah. perverse is the nature of this business. Yeah. yeah it yeah. gets strikes to the very heart of it. It came about from good intentions to protect children and, 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 and mothers. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt it came about from good intentions. But the inquisition that led to the burning of so many people at the stake started off with good intentions. 
as the theological quest for absolute knowledge. I mean, it's, uh, they, they, they say that, and um, I mean, like, pre presumably, you know, the intention of any system initially was good, but yes. um, it, it, it's quite clear that there's fairly deliberate uh, perversion oh, yeah. of that Absolutely. system going Subversion, on. Subversion, they call it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and um, you know, so, so I, I think there's this, um, part, part of it, I, I'd say, it seems to be this war against parents generally. Oh, yeah, um, pri Primarily fathers, and they've, they've yeah. obviously used yeah. this... Um, yeah particular strategy of saying that the dad is uh, the, engaged the, the in DV domestic is the gateway. Uh, yeah, DV violence, is the shield, yeah, yeah. is the gateway, it's the railway. Sure, it's the sure, railway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the amount of non molestations obtained ex parte after the last vote came in, legal aid since the punishment of offenders, in some areas of a several hundred percent increase. Mm -hmm. Or totally untested allegations. Yeah. Would only one party have an access to the agencies. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I mean, this is, the, this is the 21st century in the UK. It's yeah. a G, what, G6, G7 nation? G7, it's one of the G7 nations. And you have this, and yet you have all the people doing the Black Lives Matters about the discrimination faced by them in the past. Yeah, yeah. And it was the exact same discrimination nowadays, with uh, almost 5,000 men per year committing suicide. And you have 4,110 was the figure actually in 2016. It increased 300 plus after the last book. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. the surprise? Yeah, it's, it's gone up in the last few years, isn't yes. it, the number of men who were and killing And yet the themselves. British Psychological Association resisted a psychology section for men for decades. So one for women since I think, uh, maybe 1983, I'm not certain. Yeah, yeah. They refused one for, and it, it, 1,280 psychologists voted against a um, section for males and a committee, I think, in April 2019. Mm -hmm. So the police discriminate against you if you're victim of domestic violence, the local services, the National Domestic Violence Agency, totally discriminatory. I know, mm. I asked them for help. Mm. Just as I asked the Brent, the Messy Violence Agency for help. I mean, my stupidity was laughable. <laughs> you know, honestly, I was so ignorant and stupid. I, mm. I often look back and have a great humour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My belief that there's a fair and just system and you could present your case. Sure, sure. <laughs> but, you know, it's a... Uh, and, and, and what, what and sort then of the help, were you, what help were you asking for? Well, the mother was putting savage pressure on the children and me. Yeah. Would you say to get rid of me? And I wanted help from the professionals to, to, to protect the children. We were adults. I figured that the courts would sort us out. Mm -hmm. But there's these three children. She was a very intense, high-flying career woman. And uh, someone had to look after the children. And here they were having all sorts of problems because of the abuse she was heaping on me. So I thought, let's get the professionals in, get some help. Yeah. No, I mean, that's like asking crocodiles to be prison wardens, you know. Like, uh, you know my, so so the professionals stupidity. weren't so helpful as it turns well, out. Well, you so. see, they totally rejected me when I asked them for help. Mm -hmm. And then when she asked them for help, she was immediately brought in for private meetings. Right, yeah, yeah. She was the primary earner. I was the primary carer. Yeah. They are not interested in who looks after the children. Their version of a warped ideology, and it is a warped ideology. Mm -hmm. So that was that their process. And my intention is, while I live, I will seek to get rid of that process. Yeah. And get rid of what I call child endangered gender discrimination uh -huh. and bring in gender neutral and partial professionalism. Yeah. Or yeah. in other words, make them do their job properly. Protect sure. children. Sure, yeah. yeah. You want to make it simpler. Mm -hmm. Or, as I sometimes say, how about equality? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is yeah. it a horrible term? Um, well, I mean, I'm just not exacrespacing the situation. Not and, and it. So, some level of professionalism. But it's and, increasingly uh, getting worse. You know, yeah, in in yeah. the number of years I've been involved, among the changes I've seen, particularly since 2013, have been the practice direction 12J, where the father is letting in the person can't cross-examine the mother. That's been reduced. Course of controlling behaviour, that came in. That's yeah. been a major factor now in the family court. LASPO, well, I've already talked about that. And uh, within another year or so, you'd have the presumption of contact being removed. In wow, effect, it yeah, might yeah. be removed in legislation, but it'd be removed in interpretation. There'd be a tweaking of the law. With the um, uh, coercive control and behaviour, yeah. which they're applying to men, which mm. I, I sort of find that they're doing this quite frequently. I, I find oh, yeah. that quite funny. It's because mainstream I, in the family court. I, I generally find that, um, you know, w women are quite often the ones oh, yeah. who use coercive yes. and control and behaviour yes. more. Within yes. a relationship. But the gateway which, uh, agencies are, remember? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when yeah. the courts themselves own agencies, mm -hmm. agency providers are only that male can be, only males can be perpetrators and only females can be victims. Yeah. Females can only yeah. be victims. Mm. 
And, and with, um, with that particular um, strategy, I, I guess what they're doing is they make it easier for her to make one of these types of allegations. There's a pro where, whereas, process, I mean, it's, a gravy train. But basically, it's easier than, you know, creating a violent situation, because if she says this, then it's given legitimacy. Oh, totally. And then they can say, oh, well, you know, he was being coercive and controlling. Yeah. Therefore, it's OK for us That's to right. deny him contact. That's right. Oh, and yeah. she doesn't have to then make up a um, no, him actually being violent or something. Yeah. So What's it makes it easier for her to... the definition of coercive and controlling? This interpretation yeah. is entirely subjective. Yeah, yeah, But only yeah. one gender, 95% of the time, has access to the gateway agencies. Mm. And the mm. laugh of it is, they will always say they're doing it for the protection of the child. When, in fact, as the brilliant William Collins has established, uh, from a serious case reviews and from coroner's reports, yeah, yeah, yeah. women's aid campaigned very hard that the presumption of contact removed. And the ones that, that men make an application to family court was coercive controlling behaviour itself. Right. So right, trying to yeah. see your children is coercive controlling behaviour. Okay, yeah. And William Collins dug into this because they're making a the big inroads with all the mainstream media backing them and promoting it that there's 19 children killed during court order contact with fathers. When in the same 10 years, 332 children were killed, the majority by the mothers. Right, but they yeah, didn't yeah. publicize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're now trying to bring in legislation that if a father, or the interpretation of legislation, that a father makes an application to see his children, is course of controlling behavior. So, so with, with that one, it was basically when fathers were trying to obtain contact with yeah. their children well, during order, the, uh, that court process. Application. Uh, and that that, that is like course of controlling behaviour. 19 behavior. kids were killed in, by no, In the previous 10 years, the body in the Women's Aid did this survey. Yeah, yeah. Uh. And let's not mock statistics as Oscar Wilde once did. Mm -hmm. And they demonstrated, they cherry-picked and demonstrated 19 children were killed while during court order contact with their father over the previous 10 years. Yes, yeah, yeah. But they admitted the fact that 232 children were killed so in those it, 10 it was, years, the majority by the mothers. Yeah, it, it was massively skewed yes. the other way. And uh, the, it, the, the mother was far yeah. more likely to Well, this to is where we keep the, getting uh, the figure the of one in three children, one in three women process. are victims of domestic violence. Yeah. And yeah, when yeah. you demonstrate to them that this doesn't happen in the UK, oh, that's worldwide. Right. So yes, it's whatever yeah. suits. Mm -hmm. It's a warped, sick, and ideology. But it's got massive funding, billion. I mean, Aaron Pitch is absolutely correct. It's a multi-billion fraud industry. Yeah. Attack yeah, on yeah. fathers and family and society. Mm -hmm. But it's got nearly no opposition. So, yeah. of course, yeah, yeah. nature never allows a vacuum. And I mean, just to uh, like what you were saying before with the, uh, the negative impacts it's having on the children, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot. I, I think that there's, um, you know, there's a, a severe risk the children or the children will develop mental health problems later on in life as a problems. result of yes. not having, you know, contact with their dad, their mum, you know, whoever. Because if and children have been involved with both parents for a few years, yeah, yeah, right, they have that automatic instinct and love for both parents. Now, I'm not talking about violent or lunatic parents. Mm -hmm. There are some parents who shouldn't be seeing their children. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very, very small percentage, but there is a small percentage. So I'm not obviously saying every parent, because I'm usually accused of this. Right, that right, I want yeah. every parent, even a murderer. Uh -huh. Well, the person who says that obviously is a warped mindset in the first place. Yeah, and they yeah. happily support parental alienation because sure. they're against shared yeah. parenting. So I happily remind them of that. But um, children have this implicit trust when they're growing up with this, uh, a family unit. That's their world. And the world is shattered. It's like a mirror that's cracked. And then that section of trust is stunts their emotional growth later on. Yeah, There's yeah. lots of psychological evidence to demonstrate that. I'm not a child psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I do know this yeah, from yeah. Uh, attending um, workshops and the like. And it demonstrates that the part of that child's emotional development is blocked mm -hmm. because the trust has been shattered. Yeah, yeah. So when later on they have their relationships with their children, and having children and relationships is very stressful for many people. It requires a lot of work to be successful. Mm -hmm. right? Romeo and Juliet was a pipe dream, don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, those, chi is, those children yeah, then yeah. themselves, they go back to this default mechanism, the triggers, the PTSD, as I call it. Sure, sure. They have that from their childhood. Mm -hmm. So how could those damaged people be the more ably equipped to deal with the problems they face later on themselves? Yeah. As Aaron Pitsy says, intergenerational. Yeah, so it's, it, the cycle repeats. But to the professionals in the system, hey ho, extra income. They're yeah. not there looking for the income initially. But as a byproduct, 
And it's very hard to get anyone to change the system if they have, may have a loss of income because of it. Mm -hmm. None of these systems want to be removed. Yeah, it, it does. It does seem that at, that se at the same time, all, all of these systems are kind of working together yeah. as a way of increasing. It may not have been deliberately their, their own size That's and, right. and their own uh, their, their own scope and, and so on. Yeah. It's and, the same people and it, all the it time. It seems to me, you know, what, one of the other things we're seeing is that more kids are going into care generally. Yeah, and you've spoken about this and how um, the the, the falling apart of the relationship. Yeah can result in the child being removed from uh, both parents and then alone that. into the foster care not system. Ha, not alone that. Yeah, I've yeah. known several situations for mothers who were in care themselves, then later on had the children taken off them because they had been in care themselves, right, which yeah. rendered them inappropriate parents. Sure. Because sure. they hadn't, I mean, this is Kafka-esque. Yeah. They're just repeatedly processed. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these mothers I've met, they may not be the world's greatest mother by a middle-class social worker standards. Yeah, yeah. But all they needed was a bit of help quite often. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not talking financial help, yeah. just a bit of emotional and practical help. I know a woman, I can't mention her name obviously. So, so the, the idea there is because they were raised in the care system, That's right. they're not they're suitable to be parents of themselves. being a, right. uh, a natural I know, parent uh, yes, themselves. I, I know so several their mothers this has happened to. have to be taken away I don't know the reason. I don't know the bigger figure obviously, yeah. but I know yeah. several mothers this has happened to. Mm -hmm. I know a woman who had two children when she was in her 20s. She was a very small woman, I obviously can't name her. And uh, she just had a good bit of depression after the second child. Well, yeah, after yeah. what she's been through, <laughs> she was extraordinary to have managed. I consider childbirth the greatest achievement possible by humans, I might add. Mm -hmm. And I used to run marathons, so I know a bit of an effort. Mm -hmm. I consider mm -hmm. that a bit, uh, the, yeah, I know you. It's, it, it's your worse than your average marathon, then. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, I know you're an experienced marathon <laughs> runner, so I'm talking to knowledge. Uh, but um, with the first one particularly, the second and third may be easy. Sure, sure. But leaving that aside, uh, so full credit for women for wanting to give birth. I mean, mm -hmm. the greatest respect possible for them. And uh, um, I know a woman who had depression. The baby blues is quite often called postnatal depression. And I would swear that about 20% of the men who come to us with a child that's less than a year, the mother is just quite often depressed. That's all she is. Yeah. And not a surprise after what she's been through. Right? Yeah, yeah. And this woman went looking for help online and to phone and agencies to get help. And this is about five, six years ago. And all she was asked was, basically, is your partner abusing you? Uh -huh. How do you feel about him? She says, I effing hate him. But I hate everybody. I hate myself more than anyone else. And she realized that all they're doing is exploiting. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There's no help there. Uh -huh. They're just fanning the flames. They're, they're just looking for those tenter That's hooks. That's right, too. the tender hooks, yeah, the tentacles. Yeah. yeah, she hated the husband. She hated everybody to try and then promote that particular That's narrative. That's right. Yeah, the flame yeah. is the mm -hmm. yeah, this desire. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And any system that seeks to exacerbate problems between parents is particularly disgusting. Uh huh. And at the very minimum, I mean, in my dream world, not alone will a lot of these systems be defunded. Yeah. The personnel within the agency that got this fund and should be liable for repaying it back to the taxpayer. Yeah. 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 And their answer should be taken on the same as any other criminal. Mm -hmm. Right? To me, once you set out to deliberately alienate children from a loving parent for no good reason other than ideology, yeah. you are yeah. a child abuser. Let's uh -huh. call it for what it is and stop weasel words. Yeah. I mean, yeah. weasel words is such a common narrative here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm badly educated, so I can't do the posh language a lot of them do. Uh, a leaving certificate for me meant I could leave Ireland. That's my understanding of that's my, sure, that's sure, my certificate yeah, yeah. of uh, academic achievement. But to me, there is absolute child abuse taking place on a widespread scale. Yeah. Within the UK, as we sit here now, yeah, particularly yeah. in the working class communities and in the poorer communities. I, 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 say, I think the, the results, what we're seeing generally, is you know the, the, the general picture is, is absolutely appalling. Yes. So, and so we're, we're, we're seeing more, more children who are generally growing up um, within the welfare system, right. also more who are being moved into foster care yeah. at a very young age. More committing crimes at a younger age. We're, we're seeing marriage rates, um, oh, they're no, falling no. apart. For working know. class, they don't exist. Yeah, yeah. The, so the, There are middle class upwards. So f far fewer people are getting married oh, now yeah. as well. Yes. And um, I mean, birth rates too, like they're, they're going down as well. Well, among sections of the population, not all yeah. sections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were situations for, I grew up in Ireland for six mm. and ten children families were not unusual. Yeah. I would have yeah, with no. three ten parent families, ten children per families, not ten parents. Sure. And sure. one family of fourteen. Yeah, yeah. Now, all of those children have done very well. Yeah. And they grew up in what we now call poverty. 
mm-hmm. we didn't notice poverty then. Yeah. Because they were all they were, they always had food on the table. Yeah. And the yeah. both parents worked, and the parents, the mothers were very happy and proud of their children and their achievements. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were giants, those people. Yeah. But before contraception, all the rest was widely available in Ireland. Too many women were prisoners of their womb. Yeah. And yeah. I feel sorry for those who were. Mm-hmm. It must have caused massive problems for them. Uh, but there's meant to be... That, that was sort of the mentality, that was the mentality. back then yes, as well, right. wasn't it? We're so. talking 40, 50 years ago and more. Yeah, it's yeah. all changed now. Uh-huh. But now you have this toxic gender politics where contraception is readily available. Uh-huh. Nobody thinks twice about contraception. Everybody has access to it. And the vast majority of work can now be done by either, either gender. Mm-hmm. When I was a young person growing up, women couldn't drive trucks and buses. Yeah, because before yeah. servo brakes and servo clutches and all the rest and hydraulic gearbox or, or sorry automatic gearboxes mm, you needed mm-hmm. a leg like an elephant to double the clutch <laughs> and all the rest right, yeah, this yeah. is reality <laughs> you try driving an old british Leyland truck from the early 70s mm-hmm. alex e Dower's person turned them around without the power steering now a seven stone woman can drive full marks to her let her have choice if she wants to do the work fine but why is there no choice for a father to remain involved with his children yeah post divorce separation yeah, this is yeah. my whole argument uh-huh. This artificially construed gender toxic politics, which only benefits the ideology of those within it. It, it, it seems to be massively anti-family, Savage massively anti-marriage, yes. anti-children, yes. Uh, anti-everyone, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is making the mo- is making the mothers domestic slaves. Mm-hmm. You could say that there were uh, slaves, in, uh, sorry, economic slaves. You could yeah, say that there yeah. had been domestic slaves, but don't forget. They were the matriarch. They were the head of the family unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone knew in Ireland, there's Connie Sack, where I grew up. The man was boss of the land. Yeah, she was boss yeah. of the house. Yeah, and yeah. She determined yeah. what happened on the land. Uh huh. But nobody questioned this. Yeah. This used to be a joke in Ireland. I've often seen fridge magnets and all the rest. And it's a good joke. And a lot of jokes. Many a good word is spoken in jest. And the comment is, don't speak to the man in the house of the boss. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like that's fine because the two people were bringing their best. Mm-hmm. to their individual abilities yeah, to yeah. the family unit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I benefited from that myself. My parents are still alive, fortunately. Two I mean, people. if if she's got 10 or 14 children, or, or, then or it's, it's, it's a bit of a major operation in the family. It, it so, does, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, a major operation feeding all of them in the first place. Yeah, yeah. So he'd yeah. better be a pretty good worker. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. there were a few failures, of course, and all the rest. There were a few men who weren't very good workers. And there were yeah, a few that yeah. boozed too much. But they were the minority. And they were held in contempt. Because the first thing you expect to do as a man, a common expression you used to hear from women who were young was, he's too useless to be able to provide for a woman. Nice, yeah. yeah, yeah. You had to be considered capable of providing for a woman. Uh-huh. So a lot of men who weren't going to get the family farm immigrated took the boat to England. Because if you didn't have a farm, how could you provide? In the countryside. You weren't yeah. going to earn much money as a labourer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she was looking out for herself and her children. And she was right. I'm not her girl. Yeah. But now, you see, look where we are now. The meal ticket for life the domestic violence argument or what have you. You give it as a father, but you have the benefits, you have the financial benefits. Yeah. Far too often. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the equality there and where's the welfare of the child? I, I, I sort of yeah, I I, I said I I mean I, I don't see you know, at some point I see the system snapping, but I, I think it's just on this uh, downward spiral I, at the moment. I, so. I doubt it. Within yeah. the next five years at least. I mean my personal hope is that there be no reason why when my book is published, mm-hmm. The War on Dads and Children. Well, whenever it gets published, it's been delayed for three years. Martin Dobbins is supposed to get it published. hasn't happened so far. So I may have to do something myself shortly. Um, my hope is that within five years, the UK can match the EU average for children, yeah. post divorce and separation. Yeah, and yeah. within 10 years, uh, match the best. Now, we're not talking blue sky theory. We're talking just matching what's the way the established practice in neighboring countries. Yeah. They are not our enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there has been a war, the Second World War, in this section of Europe, even beside the Balkans. Right? So, but when I mention this, all I ever hear is, but the welfare of the child is paramount. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a complete mock. I mean, this is just so, what they say to everything, it's, isn't it? It brushes so, people off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And politicians are easily brushed off. I mean, the Labour Party is totally against shared parenting because it's run by hardline gender vigilantes mm-hmm. who will name and shame any man who goes up in Parliament. The last man in Parliament who got brave about it was accused of being a rape apologist by Jess Phillips, George Galloway. Nice, he brought yeah, in an early yeah. day motion for shared parenting that this yeah. House recognised that men who have not been convicted of a crime and all the rest should have a proper responsibility for their children. Brought in by him and Matt O'Connor, Fathers for Justice. I think he got 104 or 106 MPs signing it. Yeah, but said he's yeah. a bit of a maverick MP. That was shows that there is a deep desire. But of course it went nowhere. And shortly after, she was an ex-MP anyway. 
well, he's an ex-member of the Labour Party, because there is no room in the Labour Party. The Tories will just go whatever saves money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Liberals, let's not waste time there because it's just, you know, it's time wasting talking about that. So, so I, I think pr practically, I mean, the, the two no major political... things you'd bring in would be shared parenting and yeah. also... Meaningful shared parenting. And, and also just get the whole uh, domestic violence um, way of thinking, you know, that this idea All of then getting... Uh, uh, what was it, um, you know, uh, legal aid from yes, right. making allegations uh, yeah, about yeah. domestic violence. Obviously, Just get all of that taken out. Yes. And, yeah, Obviously, yeah. anyone who is a criminal should be brought through criminal courts and processed. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. anyone who is a criminal. But he, these are not... 95% of the fathers I come across have never seen mm. a criminal court. Mm -hmm. So why are they being treated as criminals? Why are they subject to the greatest punishment you can have apart from capital punishment? Yeah, the eradication yeah. of your children. Now, there's very seldom orders saying you can't see your children. They just don't enforce the orders. There's an 98% failure in enforcing their own orders yeah. by applications yeah, yeah. made by fathers. Mm -hmm. So, here you have a system with a 98% failure to enforce the orders. And it says, and these orders are made the best interest of the children. Usually yeah. have to cost them tens of thousands of pounds. Yeah, yeah. And they say that the wealth of the child is paramount. Where's the proof? Their own actions completely give lie yeah. to that expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's no political movement behind it. Mm -hmm. There's no men's movement. There's no shared parenting movement. A, a family see fathers is doing its best. A lot of people say, I mean, I have no great respect for the National Charity Organization, let's put it that way. But I'm not going to wash dirty linen in the public. Yeah, yeah. But I always say, who is doing more? If you want to uh, protest about them, or Fathers for Justice, okay, fine, protest. What are you doing more yourself? Mm -hmm. Ah, well, I'm looking for excuse. They come up with all these convenient escape scapegoats. That is, whatever going to pick out, pluck out of the sky or, and the vast majority of men just walk away because they can't deal with the failure. Yeah. People yeah, often yeah. say to me, why do far more men not get involved? And my answer is, how many men go back to a cancer ward after escaping? Mm -hmm. How many? Yeah, it's a brutal yeah, time yeah. of their lives because they're lucky to get away with mm -hmm. their sanity. With their sanity I talk about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They alone their former life and all the rest. And that is where I have the, the bugbear. There's no good blame on feminism. Because what's happened with these agencies is a total perversion of feminism, which is once about equality. Okay, mm. once. Mm. Some distant past. Uh, now it's been totally gender supremacy. Totally and utterly. That's all it is about nowadays, with removal of the children, with removal of the father from the children, as it's, it's this principal operation, really. Yeah. That's what it has become. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's receiving billions in funding from, I mean, listen, COVID, when it started being the lockdown, we kept hearing these uh, feminist agencies demanding that the more funding given to the agencies because of the extra protection needed for the women who are going to be abused. During COVID? During COVID. There's absolutely no evidence for this, but this was... So this got a lot of publicity yeah, and they got, I, I, and they got a couple of hundred you know, million pounds. I've, I've heard um, yeah, this uh, narrative was promoted. That, yeah. um, on, I think it was on the BBC. It wasn't in relation to what you were saying. No, but, but it, 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 it was, was that um, it was there, there, there were these women who were at yeah. home in an, an abusive yes, environment. That's right. And because uh, so these of the lockdown, got a couple of hundred they, they more. then needed yeah. uh, extra protection. Nobody from asked agencies. how many of those yeah. phone calls to that agency was from his own representatives. Yeah, yeah. Nobody asked yeah, that yeah. question. I know uh -huh. that there are some women being abused in lockdown. <laughs> the men doing it should be in jail, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's see what I say. I remember years ago it'd been said that if there was negative results in football matches for England were playing, more women got abused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that will I've, not... I've also heard this one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no limit to the absurdity. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, of course, you had to believe the victim, mm -hmm. which was taken mm -hmm. to a grotesque level by these agencies I've just talked to you about. Yeah. Where, of course, yeah. the, victim, the, the victim obviously believed the victim after a court of law and proper process. Yeah, it's, it's not so good when someone just makes an That's allegation right. because they're, they're that, known as a complainant decides, yeah. at that time. In they're the, not known as a victim no, at no, that time because no. you haven't established yeah, it's not uh, what, uh, what happened. I mean, for yeah, example, yeah. For example yeah. the Brent Domestic Violence Accuracy Project, mm -hmm. uh, will, oh, I, this came about from Freedom of Information via my MP, Mem Member of Parliament, Barry Gardner, Brent North. It took him eight months to get them to answer a question on the Freedom of Information. Right. Why they're not helping men. Uh -huh. And saying constitution and practice, we help women. Mm -hmm. Because our figures show. Emphasize our figures. Well, of course our figures show, because they only accept evidence on females. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there is an agency to help men in Brent, mm -hmm. which doesn't exist if you contact it. It exists as a pretend. Right, and yeah. when it did exist, yeah, yeah. it was to help men in gay relationships. 
Okay. Yeah. Not much use to the average father. <laughs> sure, <right>. sure, yeah. <laughs> but this is the mechanism. Now, why are they allowed to have such a control over? Because the entrance determines the outcome. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, the, the beginning, the introduction, determines the outcome of the family court process. Yeah. So why are these unregulated agencies being allowed to work hand in glove with the official courts and the court agencies, Kafka? Yeah, okay. And why are they being funded and working hand in glove with social services in that, in that council? Fair enough. There's fair a, enough. There needs to be a forensic investigation here into the funding. Mm -hmm. It's not just a question of heads rolling. There needs to be people, pensions are removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incomes removed. Assets removed, like any other criminal organization, and given back to the state. And the state, to give it to independent agencies to try and restore the relationship between children and fathers, yeah. and mothers yeah, too, yeah. where appropriate, that instead of domestic violence agencies, there should be far more contact centers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when the people are being separated, and there's only one house, let the children have regular contact with their father in a proper environment uh, until allegations are found out one way or the other. Yeah. 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 Right? And if they're found to be false, punishment for false allegations. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And if they can't yeah. be proven, they can't be proven. So that's mm -hmm. that. You move on. Yeah, yeah. You can't have a black and white situation, guilty, innocent. I mean, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I, th I think g generally, you know, it's, it's appalling that we're, we're pretty much doing in the UK uh, in terms of uh, looking after children and parents in these, you know, post relationship breakdown situations. We're doing worse than any other country oh, in, the, nation. Yeah, in the developed uh, world. Worse. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's absolute tragedy and there does need to be a, a push by parents, by, by everyone really, by society. And, you know, in the whole society, society. To, to actually try and do better yeah. when it comes Absolutely. to this. And all you have to do is match the outcomes of the neighbours across the English yeah. Channel, which yeah, is not yeah. the world's largest ocean. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was recently in hospital with a broken back. I fell from a ladder. <laughs> I should learn to go up them properly and stay up there. I couldn't get over the professionalism of everybody in the NHS. Yeah, yeah. During yeah. COVID, mm -hmm. from cleaners, tea people, male or female, before they were to up to the consultants, doctors, the nurses. Mm -hmm. Didn't matter whether they were gay, straight, brown, black, white, Asian, European. It made no difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone is a good-humoured professional. And if they had to be busy, they were busy. And when they didn't have to be busy, they didn't have to be busy, and they were just doing the job. Why can't we have that in the family court process? Yeah. That's yeah, all it is. Yeah, it yeah. exists. It exists. Yeah, I, I agree, man. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do. But um, thank you for your time and uh, great uh, <laughs> thank, conversation. Thank, hang on, we can I'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, fist bump there. Cheers. Thank you, thank you so much, Vincent. Bye-bye.